Now that you watched the previous lessons regarding logical expression, we are going to see the if function and understand it a little better. I'm going to create an example from scratch so you can follow along. In order to do this, I'm going to create a blank screen. Let's go to our interface, to the tree view, and then create a new screen from blank. So I'm going to select a blank layout here. In order to try the function, we need to add some controls to the screen to do this demonstration. First control I'm going to insert is a text input control. So I'm going to go to insert, classic, and select text input. Okay. In this example, we are going to change the color of a shape, in this case, a rectangle, based on the value inside the text inputs. So if it's between zero and 40, it will be red, between 40 and 80, it will be yellow. And if it's between 80 and 100, it will be green, simulating the result of some company calculation or a situation like that, okay? So I already have my text input here showing, which will be useful soon. And then let's change it to accept only numbers. So here with the text input selected, we have the format property and we can change to number. Okay, this will allow me only to enter numbers and not letters. And uh, it makes easier to accept the correct information. So if it's intended for, if it's intended for numbers, why should we let the users type letters? Okay, now let's insert a rectangle. I will insert a rectangle going to insert and it's right here in the classic tab. I have the rectangle here. So I'm going to click. It will come with this purple color, color because it's the default color. And soon we are going to apply formulas to the color so we can change the color. Once I clicked in the color property of the rectangle, we see here in the formula bar, the fill property, because it's the color that will show in the rectangle. We have this RGBA color here that represents the purple color, but we could have any color here. For example, we could have color dots, and then we can see all the colors that are available as a default colors for Power Apps. And we could have here, for example, red. If I type red, I see all the types of red I have. I will choose Indian red, for example. And then the color of this rectangle will change to Indian red. Okay, but we want this color to change based on the number. And to do that, we need to use some formula a little bit more advanced than just typing the color right here, okay? And this formula needs to check if the number is less than 40. If it's less than 40, it will be red. If it's between 40 and 80, yellow, and higher than 80, green. So, so before we put this formula right here in the field property, let's see how we can obtain the number that's typed inside the text input. We can see here that this text input is called text input one in my case. It may be a different name for you if you imported, uh, if you inserted different text inputs before. Let's rename this as a good practice. So let's take this practice that always rename things to put clear names on it. I will call it txt number and for the shape that i have just inserted i'll call shp rectangle so those are the new names let's see how to obtain the number that the user types inside this text input in order to do that i'm going to insert a text label put here in the bottom and instead of having text in this property, the text property of the label, let's obtain the number that's typed inside the txt number text input. So here, instead of text, let's see how we can get that number. I'm going to 
I'm going to type the same name as the text input, in this case, txt number, and then I will put dots and access the text property. So once the user types something here inside, it will get the text that's inside here and show it the label. Let's try, see if it works. I'm going to play the app and type a number here, let's say 100. If I try to type any character here, it won't let me because I selected this, the property type of this text input as a number. So here we have the, the what is it? Uh, text input, yes, the format, not type, the format as a number. So it do, don't let me type any letter. That's very good validation for this situation. Other thing that's important to know is that this right now it's even though we typed as a number, it may be considered as a text. If we select here the formula that we put in the label and highlight the formula, we see the value here. It will show in the formula, but uh, the type is a text. And in, inside the if function that we are going to do soon, we need to treat this as a number. So it's important important to convert this to a number type. In order to do that, let's put the function value around this txt number dot text. And this will convert the value that's typed in there to a number. See, once I highlight, we can see here value txt number dot text equals 100 and the data type is a number. So we make sure that the if function will treat as a number to do the comparisons that we are going to see now, if you are watching this video and you think it's important content, if you are enjoying it or if it could be better, please let me know in the comments. Your interaction is very important to me because based on what you type, I can improve the content of my channel and also plan the next videos. So let me know in the comments right now, pause this video and let me know where you're from, what you're doing with Power Apps, and what, what subjects would you like me to cover in the next classes. That's very appreciated. Please do it right now, and let's continue with the class. Let's then finally jump to the fill property of the rectangle and start applying our formula. First of all, we are going to type if let's open a parenthesis and see what we have here it says we need to put a logical test that's a condition that results in a boolean value so now you should know what's a boolean value based on the previous videos that i recommended so we are going to put a test here that will return true or false Let's say, for example, I'll just put other things here to explain better. Then we are going to put the real number that we typed. But let's say, for example, if I put one equals one, that's a logical test that returns true because one is equal one. Then if I put a comma, I need to put here the true value, an expression that provides the result when the condition is true. So if this condition is true, is true, it will return whatever I put here after the first comma. Let's say I will put green, so color dot green. Okay, so if it one equals one, it will return green. Now I will put another comma. That's the false return. So an, an expression that provides the results when the previous conditions are false. Let's say if one is equal, is different than one, if returns false, that's impossible, but it would return red, so color dot red. In this case, the rectangle will be always green because equals e one equals one. But if I change the test, let's say one equals two, it will return false and it will fall into the second argument in this case the third argument of the if function it will go to the else value the, the value when it returns false when no previous conditions are met 
So I will put 1 equals 2, it will be false, so it will go to the last option right here. So 1 equals 2, that's false, and then it returns red. We can organize in different lines, so let's put an enter here in front of this one, and also another enter for the third argument. And here we can start testing our actual values from the text input instead of just sample numbers. So instead of 1 equals 2, what do we want to do? We want to test if the value that the user typed is lower than 40, then we want to show yellow. So we want to do txt number dot text is less than 40. And we want to show color dot yellow. That's a color already in the Power Apps parameters. So it's an option of color right here. We are having an error here. Let's hover the mouse over it to see what's the error. It says invalid arguments type because it, it's expecting a number, a decimal, a date, a time to compare with 40. Right now it's a text. Remember, I just mentioned before that we need to use the value function around this text number dot text. So it converts to a number and then it can compare it correctly. Value, I put an extra R. Okay, now if it's less than 40, it will show yellow. Otherwise, it will show red. This is the condition I did. Actually, let me change. If it's smaller than 40, let's put red. And otherwise, let's show yellow. So the lower the number, the more critical the situation. So it's red, then yellow, and later we are, see, we are going to see how to put the green. Okay, now let's play the app. It's not smaller than 40. So the condition will be false, the first condition, and it will go to the yellow. If we put 20, for example, 20 is smaller than 40, and then it will show red. So let's see what the expression will do. It will check 20 is smaller than 40, true. So we are going to get the first condition. If not, we are going to get the other condition. That's yellow. What about if you want to add a third condition? That's in this case, the condition that will show the green. We can do this. We can put another condition after this true return. So let's organize again in one line this expression. So if value is less than 40, it will return red. Otherwise, we want to test if the value is less than 80. So I will copy this, paste in the second line and change to 80. And then what will it return if it's less than 80? It will return yellow, as we are seeing right here. And then if we put a comma, we can keep adding conditions to tests and responses in case it returns true. And in the last one, if we don't put a condition, is the last answer that it will return, in this case, the else value. So it will try if this one, then return this. If this one, then return this. Else, if it doesn't return anything, it will return the color dot green. So color dot green. In this case, it will test the first condition. If it pass, it will return red. Even though 30, for example, is less than 80, this condition is also true, but it fell in the first condition. So it just returns the first answer. So we need to take care when we, in the order we put the conditions. For example, if we had the 80 before the 40, so like I just did, like I just changed, if the number is less, is less than 80, it will always return yellow, even though if it's 20, because it's less than 80, it passed the first condition, so it returns the first response. So in this case, we want to test if it's less than 40. If not, we are going to test if it's less than 80, and if it doesn't pass and doesn't return yellow, it will return the last option, that's the green. 
this is all we need to make it change the colors. Let's play and test. So I'm going to play. 20 is less than 40, so it's showing reds. 40, if I put just a number 40, 40 is less than 40. No, it's equal, so it will return yellow. If I put 79, 79 is less than 80, that's the next test. Yes, so it will return yellow. Now, if I put 85, it's not it's not less than 40, not less than 80, so it, fa it fails in the last response, that's the last one when nothing is met and it will return green. Note that when I hover the mouse, it's still showing this purple color because you're not putting anything in the hover color, you're just putting in the color, the fill property. The other colors are still the same, but that's not the point right now. So the point is testing the logic and make making the shape change the color based on the number and it's working. Now we can use the if function always that we want to show things or change properties based on a condition. That will be very useful through all the apps that we are going to develop in your life. So now we can go back to our app and keep developing it. See you in the next class.